Australian Mammal of the Year is all about raising awareness of our over 350 native mammal species. We've just crowned the golden tipped bat as this year's winner, bidding out the dingo and the Gilbert's potteroo. I sat down with George Madani to tell us more about this amazing animal. George, this is a pretty exciting result. How do you feel about the golden tipped bat making it so far in its first year in the competition? Hi, uh, to be honest, I'm completely surprised and blown away that an you know, innocuous little obscure tiny bat could have you know, flown its way, flooded its way into the hearts of so many people and garnered so much support. It's fantastic. You know, I'm guessing that most people across Australia probably haven't heard about this species before. So what would they be surprised to learn about the golden tipped bat? I mean, it was absent for decades from when it was first discovered to when it was rediscovered, you know, several decades past. So it's an extremely little known species. It's highly specialised. But what makes it special is that it's extremely unique and it's got habits that no other bats in Australia have. Its diet consists only of orb-weaving spiders. It only hunts spiders that it plucks from the centre of its webs and it eats pretty much nothing else. As far as its roosting habits go, it's also pretty special because it roosts in the underside of suspended bird nests. So it doesn't go to any trouble itself to make a nest or anything like that. Most bats utilise hollows or caves. This bat is special in that it uniquely utilises bird nests. They're golden tip because it helps with the camouflage. So they can be hanging from the bottom of these nests and they blend into all the sort of wiry fibres that comprise the nest and they can go completely unnoticed if uh, anything like a predator was to look up. They just blend into the nest. So back to the orb weaving spiders, how do they actually find their food in the forest? Yeah, so these bats are really interesting. They're what we call a clutter adapted species. So they like foraging in really dense environments so they've got really really high frequency sonar so they fly around slowly in the rainforest almost like a butterfly and as they fly they emit their sonar and they can detect a spider sitting in the middle of a spider web and then they jump in and grab it and then munch 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 and they suck their guts out and it's dinner for the night. So in terms of awareness what does it really mean for this species to make it this far in the competition? That's what's been so fantastic about this competition. I mean, we've got a lot of well-known, well-loved species, iconic species like the dingo, the koala, but this competition has provided an opportunity for the obscure and the lesser known, you know, for people to learn about them and to realise these really fascinating, interesting things exist. And Australia is home to so much mammalian diversity. Following the Black Summer fires, myself and colleagues, we went out and we studied the species to see what the impact was on these bats. And they live in rainforest and rainforest isn't supposed to burn. So what we found was where there was fire within a kilometre of the, where we found them, their occupancy reduced by up to 70%. So they suffered a big decline. More than 40% of their habitat burnt. And that corresponds to a 40% decline in the population, at least in New South Wales. So the fires were terrible. And the first step into getting people to care about something is they have to, have to know about it. And now having made such a strong performance in the competition, a lot more people know about this species. So hopefully that's going to generate more interest and care for them as well. 